So this is all of the data that we will be ingesting into Bloodhound. And that tool will essentially help us visualize different uh, uh, domain paths that we can take to get higher and higher privileges in the domain. So let us copy this into temp so that I can actually ingest it because the root path I need to be running the browser and root to be able to do. So let us run this and let us start and pull this up. So this will probably take uh, now decently fast. And there we go. There is the password that it has the generator for us. So let us go to localhost 8080. Now this is the default port that Burp Suite is running on. So make sure that you either remove Burp Suite or you could change the port. Uh, using the Docker Compose. And I believe you can find it right here. And then I think you change this value right to the left to something like 881. I think that should work. Or you can just remove Burp Suite so there's no port conflict, right? So yeah, this is the first password that uh, it has generated to me. So let me do it like so. And I believe it prompts me to change it. There we go. Set the new password. Whoops. And now we will ingest the data into Bloodhound, right? So we can visualize all of the possible paths and just get more overview over the entire domain. So let us go here. And then we upload it. And then we upload it. And then it will be slowly but surely ingesting. So let me get back to you once that's properly ingested. And there we go. Now the status message is set to complete. So now we can start actually looking at the data, right? So let's head over to the Explore tab. And the first thing that I like to do is to find the user that we currently have access to, right? So we have managed to get gotten a uh, a uh, shell on uh, Service Alfresco using Veneram, but we also have valid credentials, right? So we can essentially set uh, Service of Fresco, we can set him to owned right here. And then there are a few things we can query using Bloodhound that is really helpful to get the general overview. So we can go to the Cypher queries right here and hit this folder, and it will give us a lot of options with the pre built uh, search queries um, that it has available, right? So we can immediately just kind of see who all of the domain admins are if we are interested. And we can see that the pretty much the only member is administrator, right, to the domain admins. We can click on domain admins and we can click the members right there and we can see that is the case. It only has one member in this group, okay? That's okay. So remember we checked for Astrip Roasting earlier and Curb Roasting? We can see right there that uh, we can query for the Curb Roastable users using Bloodham as well, but it found nothing, right? And we had the same experience ourselves. We found one user with Astro Prosting, so let's check that. And there we go. It found as uh, service on Fresco. And we can see it right here in this field as well. Do not require pre-authentication. This is set to true, right? That's why we were able to essentially uh, request the hash, and we were also successfully uh, able to crack it. But we are interested in getting higher permissions, right? So one of the first things that I like to do with Bloodhound is to go to the shortest path. And you can either go to the shortest path to the main admins or the shortest path from owned objects. Okay, uh, we can click on both. So as you can see, this gives us a lot of output, right? But luckily we don't have to care about all of the output. So we can see that this is the user that we have owned. Okay, uh, let me see. It's probably, let's go check out the other one as well in case it's cleaner to see, probably will be. Yeah, there we go, much better. So, it seems that it has found... Yes, okay, this is good. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I can see that it has found a path, but how to actually do it will be a different question, right? But 
Always where we would like to start is the user we have access to, right? Because this is an element that we already have control over. So we can see that the user service alfresco is a member of, right? So he's a part of, essentially a part of this group right there called service accounts. And we can verify that by going back to our notes when we ran who am I all and we see and we can see the groups. And we can see that he's a part of, let's say, what was this called? Service account. Okay. So there we go. There is the group called service accounts. And the service account is also a member of privileged IT accounts, which is also a member of account operators. Okay. So um, there is the IT accounts, privileged IT accounts, and there is also the account operators. Okay. So, so far we haven't really done anything special, but we can see that our user is a part of these groups, right? Which is a part of this attack chain that Bloodhound has generated for us. Here is where it gets interesting. So, again, our user is a part of this group. And this group has generic all on the exchange windows permissions. And this group has a right tackle over the entire domain. And in the entire domain, it contains users, right? Of course. And a part of the users are obviously domain admins, right? So all of this right side right there, you can pretty much ignore that if we get to the, the hack the box local right here, we have essentially owned the domain, right? And to actually get there, uh, Bloodhound managed to find us a path. So we need to go from account operators to exchange Windows permissions and from exchange Windows permission to the domain, right? So how do I actually do this? Well, Blondon has a very useful um, little help menu right there. So if you click on the actual permission that we have right there, generic all, we can either go to Linux abuse or Windows abuse. Let's click at Linux abuse for now. And it essentially tells us that um, all control of a group allows you to directly modify group membership of the group. And we can use Sambo's net tool, again, from Linux, um, to add a user to the target group. <laughs> okay, so because we are in this group called account operators, and we have generic all permissions over this other group, we are essentially able to add a user, right? We can add the user that we are into the exchange Windows permission group, or yeah, group, uh, using this right there. And then after that, we can verify that the user was successfully added to the group, okay? So let us attempt this right here. So we need to give it some information, but that should be okay. So first of all, the target group. So it tries to add a member to the target group. And the target group that we're after in this scenario is exchange windows. Exchange. Windows permissions, like so. The target user that we would like to add to this group is Alfresco, service Alfresco. The domain was, uh, let's say, Etsy host. The domain was hack the box local, like so. The controlled user is once again service alfresco. And the password was service. Like so. And then the domain controller. I believe that's Hacktabox local as well. Let's attempt this and see how it goes. No errors at least. Um, it also gave us, yeah, this command right here to verify that it actually worked. So let us try that. Um, let's see. So the target group, okay, so we need to remove this parent. So this is the target group. And then this is the domain, this is the user, and a password. And okay, let's try that. Uh, and then add the group and then members right here. Okay, let's try running this again. 
and then let's see if it added the members. Okay, so there we go. So it seemed like it for some reason removed, maybe it's an automatic script or something. Not quite sure, but it seems so the user is added to this group. Let's see, is it still in this group? Okay, it's still in that group. Okay, let's hope it doesn't get removed. So from here, we've successfully added it to this exchange of Windows permissions, right? So we've made this one step closer to essentially getting complete access. Um, so let's see the right tackle. So to abuse right tackle to a domain object, you may grant yourself the DSS thing, yeah, permissions. Okay, so um, the members are part of this group can essentially assign DC sync, it sounds like, to themselves. Um, and then if you have the DC sync rights, right, right? We, we've, you've seen me using Circus Stump before, it allows you to dump all of the hashes, the ntds.dead secrets, uh, from the entire domain, all of the domain users. So yeah, that sounds very appealing. And from there, it should be easy way to get actually the main admin, right? You can use pass the hash, or you could try to crack the hashes, but it should be quite simple from there. So Dacol edit is a part of the Impacket suite. So Impacket, like so, and then action right, these think right. The principle is the controlled user. So let's see. I believe that's Herbis Alfresco. The target uh, distinguished name. I'm not entirely sure of the formatting of this. So let me see if I can find a usage of it. Hmm. It, what was it called again? It was called the main distinguished name. Okay, okay, okay. So like so. So this is the format that it wants. That is good to know. So C and DC. Hmm. Come in there. Let's try uh, limit try like so first. Um, so the domain is so hack the box, comma. And then let's try like so. The domain is hack the box local. And then the user again is service all of fresco. And also, I don't know if the user is still a part of this group because of the automatic script, but we will test out. I don't not quite sure what happened there. Uh, the user is no the password is service. So we can try that. Cannot modify object. Insufficient rights. Okay. Let's see again if the its user is a part of it. It was not. Okay. So let's re-add him like so. So add this user to this group. Okay. Because we have access to do that. Okay. Now he is a part of that. And let's try this. Hey, let's try giving him these sync rights again. That seemed to actually work. And then from here. Let's see. From here, we're able to do DC Zinc. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Secret Stump. So let's try that. Secrets Dump. Hack the box. Local. Um, service Alfresco. Password was service. And the IP is this. <laughs> and there we go. So, yeah. 
the this particular machine is more so focused on getting a privask in the domain, right? Abusing permissions and using Bloodhound, so yeah. Very useful. Um, that's why, again, we have this added in the actual checklist, right? Because it's just important to check, so Bloodhound. And, uh, and yeah. So from here, it should be... From here, it should be pretty simple. Um, we can go... So this is an NTLM hash. This is the anti part of it we will use to authenticate. Um, so let's see. We can use something like PSXAC. Hack the box local, the administer is correct. And then we can use the hash of the administrator and a try authenticating XO. No? Okay, I misspelled targets. That looks better. There we go. Okay. So there is her shell. Now, if you enjoy how I teach and you enjoy this video and you want to take the OCP, then what are you doing not being in this course? It's over 15 hours long and it covers everything that you need. If you're only watching the videos on YouTube, you're missing out a lot because it's over 15 hours of content. You will get access to the VIP section on Discord where you can ask me any questions and you can study alongside all the other students in our course right now. You will also get access to this checklist right here, which will cover at least 95% plus of all the attacks and all the techniques that you need to know for every single section. Not only initial access, but AD, pivoting, Linux, and Windows privilege escalation. And the goal for you is to reach proficient or at least basic competence on all of them. That's one of the things. We also have this entire roadmap right here, where there's a bunch of action steps and a bunch of cheat sheets inside all of these hyperlinks that I can't show you in this video. But once you've completed all of them, you know for a fact that you will be ready to get into the OCP exams and absolutely crush it. If that sounds interesting to you, to get all of this in 15 hour plus of <laughs> video footage from someone who has OCP, who explains different attacks and techniques and methodologies, it's going to be invaluable to you. Now, some people are confused with the offer. If you're interested in the notes, these are the notes that you will constantly see me use in the videos, right? They're pretty much recommended to go hand in hand with the course, and I use them constantly in the course itself, right? So I think you'll find it extremely useful. That's also why we have the third offer, which is the bundle where you can buy both of these together for a discount. I hope that clarifies things. Best of luck on your OCP journey. I really hope this will be massively useful to you. I'll see you in the next video.